Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at the Lafayette Arcturus 76mm telescope from the 1950s with some uh, very interesting, strange, quirky features that I love, um, including the strange focuser here. Very interesting helical focuser. We'll be looking at that uh, in good detail. It's also a very fast telescope. It's an F uh, about 12 or so, 900 and some millimeters focal length approximately. So it's a very uh, quick telescope. And the optics are superb in this telescope. They do show a little bit of color as you would expect from a uh, three inch F fast telescope like that. But not bad at all. The, uh, the images are still very, very crisp, very sharp and uh, nice detail in the images. So let me show you some close-ups of this wonderful, charming telescope. This telescope even comes with the uh, lovely cases, and they're not in bad shape for considering that they're from the 1950s. Check out the mass of the focuser on this thing. Uh, it's gigantic, very, very heavy telescope, and that is mostly uh, the focuser here is a hefty piece of metal and it uh, just really changes the overall weight of this telescope considerably. The finder is a little bit on the heavy side also for a finder. I don't know if you want to call this a finder. It's 500 millimeters focal length. It's really not a great finder. This finder is too much. Uh, 25 power. Uh, it's hard to really find anything. Uh, last night I was trying to find Jupiter. Jupiter is a nice bright thing. It took me a long time to figure out where Jupiter was with this scope. You need to have a, um, a lower power finder to go with this. I mean, this might be as a, you know, a guide scope or a uh, sort of a super finder. But you need a little 6x30 or some uh, low power finder. To help you find things, to get started. At Check least. out the slow motions. This um, this mount is very, very beefy, very robust. It's nice and uh, it's got a sort of a, it's got a tangent arm here. I'll show you close-ups of that. Um, but it's very, very strong. Lock it down. It's excellent. It's really well made. Nice and heavy. close-up of the mount. Nice clamping lock mechanism here. I guess I should lock down the mount so it doesn't travel around so much. Here's the uh, tangent. And this is extremely well made. This is really beefy, very robust. Uh, it gives you a limited amount of travel. It's plenty. It's more than enough. You, could, uh, you can center something very nicely. No big deal at all. Very, very nice. You don't need a big gear up there. This works great. The slow motion knobs are uh, nice, convenient. Handy. By far the most interesting thing about this telescope is this really interesting, strange, bizarre uh, helical focuser. And you can see that when you focus out, it has a limited amount of travel. And when you focus out, you do expose... Uh, I honestly don't like very much that you're exposing kind of some, some greasy threads there. Um, it is pretty smooth. But it is definitely not like a, say, a feather touch. This is more like a elephant touch kind of a uh, focuser. It's very, very, shakes the telescope quite a bit. Even making a slight motion uh, is very, very tricky. And of course you have your coarse motion here with the draw tube. Boy, is this well made. This is extremely smooth. And there's all sorts of goodies you can put on here. It even has... Very strangely, an inch and a quarter adapter. Very strange for the late 50s to have that. Most of the eyepieces and uh, stuff, uh, everything that comes with it, um, are 965. <clears throat> but it does have an inch and a quarter focuser, uh, a focuser adapter. Uh, those unscrew right here. Okay, here's the inch and a quarter focuser. Uh, now, back in these days, it was very desirable and very, very classy to have a, an extremely low power, I'm not sure if they called them comet eyepieces, but something with really low power in a wide field. This is a 50 millimeter Huygens, which is an unusual eyepiece. Boy, there's a lot of glass inside that thing. 
Anyhow, 50 millimeter Hoi guns, to have a decent field of view in a 50 millimeter, you have to have, it has to be bigger, it can't be 965. Uh, and this is an inch and a quarter adapter, which is convenient because I can use my inch and a quarter eyepieces in this scope. So then you have it and you have to use it straight through so you'd be focusing back here somewhere like that. At least uh, it didn't come with an inch and a quarter focuser. Uh, in it, it didn't come with an inch and a quarter star diagonal. Okay, now we're going to uh, do some solar projection observation. Uh, this comes in the box with the scope and this slides right on here like so. Then you put in the adapter. And you put in, uh, of course, you need an eyepiece. Then you're all set. You're all set for solar observations. There's a completely astonishing variety of accessories that come with this telescope. Uh, let's start with, uh, of course, it's got two regular star diagonals. One is for the finder or guide scope, whichever you prefer to call that. Uh, then it's got a whole set of eyepieces, uh, a 12, uh, and it's got a four millimeter ortho, which is probably a pretty good eyepiece. Six millimeter, although, short focal that would you'd have to have your eye right on top of that to be able to see anything there's a 12 millimeter eyepiece it seems to me well we've got this for a low power we've got the 50 millimeter eyepiece but it seems to me we need something for lower power sort of in between those two look what they supply this is called a k 26 millimeter ah 32 millimeter and it's a, a zoom eyepiece that slides back and forth. And when it's down here, you got a Kellner 26 millimeter. When you're out here, you've got a, apparently an achromatic Huygens, I'm guessing, 32 millimeter. And it's in a 965 format. So that's your uh, sort of medium low power. This might, I would call this a comet eyepiece. That's, you know, maybe not what they called it. Um, this is your Poro Prism. 965 format. Uh, there's your adapter. This is nice. This is nice to have an ad adapter for the, this is inch and a quarter format. So that's very nice because then you can use this scope with, uh, with inch and a quarter eyepieces. What the, look at what this is. This is a Herschel wedge and uh, you can use this for solar observation in addition to this. This is your solar projection device. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this Arcturus telescope by Lafayette from the 1950s. Thank you for watching.